Okay, so this is take two on this second video, and uh, I, I screwed up the first one pretty well. Like I just started, I said something that didn't make any sense. So I'm, I'm 10 seconds into this one, and I'm going to try to make it better. Here's what I want to do. Uh, if you happen to watch the last video, which had to do with a glob flying into a fixed mass, so I had just a hanging mass 2m, and I had a little glob of clay mass m flying up, and right at its apex it collided with this, and then the two stuck and swung up to some new height. Okay, that's a clay glob. They, they had a hit and stick collision where they stuck and they swung up there. We analyzed that collision from both a linear and an angular perspective and said, hey, look at this. We can, we can sometimes analyze the situation from conservation of linear momentum. We can sometimes analyze the situation from conservation of angular momentum. And in that case, this situation, they both yielded the same result. Okay, well, there were some nifty things about that. If I'm looking at this, this is really just a collision between two point masses. All right? We had a point mass here, we had a point mass here. And in that collision then, collisions between two point masses, their centers of mass are all right along the same line. As in when I stick a clay glob on here, well, these two objects, you know, the center of mass of the system is still going to follow along the same path. All right? And it was, a, it was two simple objects that all we're going to do then is take the momentum this has after the collision and redirect it into gaining potential energy instead of leaving it as kinetic energy after the collision. All right, well, in this new situation, what I want to do is I want to say, let's take something not quite so simple. Instead of a, a concentrated mass, you know, just colliding a point mass with a point mass and analyzing it different ways, I want to take something different. I want to take a rigid bar, okay, where the mass of this bar I guess I called it a rod before. I'll call it a bar now. The mass of the bar is 4m, and I'm going to have the same clay glob fly up and smack into it. But I'm going to have that clay glob hit at a place that's not right at the center of mass, and it's not right at an end. It's just some random place. Okay. In this situation, when I'm not having collisions right at the center of mass, when I've got things going on that are that are more complicated. When I have objects that have mass distributed everywhere, not just as point masses, what we're going to see here is that conservation of linear momentum doesn't work for us anymore. Because the, the situation where the center of mass of this rod, which is what's going to govern where the rod travels, it's not free to translate. It's not free to move linearly wherever it wants. This rod, because it is fixed at an end, is only allowed to rotate. And because of that, I can't analyze the situation based on conservation of linear momentum. Okay? Because the center of mass of this system is going to have to, and this whole rod even, is all going to rotate around this point. I can't, so I've got to analyze this from purely conservation of angular momentum, that all the little pieces of mass that are part of this rod need to rotate around this point. Okay, so let's try this from a conservation of angular momentum standpoint. Before the collision, if I'm looking at this, I have two options for analyzing angular momentum. I have the I omega way and I have the R cross P method. On the R cross P method, that's probably the one I would go with here. Why? Because the clay glob is a point mass, so it has, and it has linear momentum that's easy to calculate. Its linear momentum is its mass, m, times its velocity before the collision, which I'm just going to call v. Okay? So that linear momentum is moving perpendicular to a radius, where that radius looks like if this whole distance is l and this is 1 fourth l, it looks like it's moving at a radius of 3 fourths l. And so I'm saying it has angular momentum around this point. Why am I choosing to measure angular momentum around this point? Well, because angular momentum around this point this thing's going to rotate around that point. It's fixed. It has to rotate around that point. So since I'm going to be rotating around this point, that's the point I have to use as my reference point, my, my point that I want to study the angular momentum conservation around. Okay, so before the collision, I'm saying I have angular momentum of R cross with P. My radius, I'm going to call 3 fourths L. And... I already checked to make sure that that linear momentum and that radius are perpendicular to each other, so I don't have to put the cross product in there anymore. And for my linear momentum, I'm going to just say it's 
m times v, where this mass is the mass of the clay, and the v is just this velocity at impact. Okay, that has to equal equal my angular momentum after the collision. Well, after the collision, I want to analyze this angular momentum as an i omega. Why? Because this thing has now a complicated kind of inertia. It's not just point masses anymore where I can just say, oh, r cross p. Okay, it's it's a continuous distribution of mass. It's got rotational inertia. It's not just going to be m r squared. It's got I had to sum up all the inertias for all these little pieces of mass to get the inertia of this rod. Okay, so that I prime is going to pose some mild issues for us. We struggled a little bit in the past with calculating rotational inertia. All right, well, let's look at how we do this one. I see this, this rod or bar, whatever we want to call it, clay glob object as really two separate objects whose inertias I can add together. I can call this I prime for the bar plus I prime for the clay would give me the total inertia of this system after the collision. Okay. For the bar, the bar is rotating around one of its ends. So its rotational inertia we've studied or we can look up on page 254 is one-third times the mass of the bar times its length squared. Okay. Um, plus I prime for the clay. We'll just leave that We'll leave that alone for a second. Let's just deal with the bar. Okay, so I prime for the system is one third. The mass of the bar is four m. Sorry that I keep going back and forth between rod and bar. And the length of this thing again, well, how long is it? Well, it's given as L. Okay. For the clay glob, the clay glob is just a point mass. So its inertia is its mass times the distance it is from the point it's going to rotate around. Well, I have that as one-fourth, sorry, one-fourth of L above the ground, or three-fourths of L from there. So three-fourths L squared. Okay, this is going to create a very ugly fraction. I really wish I had practiced this ahead of time. Sorry about that. So I get I prime is, uh, sorry, I forgot the squared, four-thirds ML squared for the bar, plus ugh, 9 sixteenths ML squared for the rod. Okay, that's going to be some number of probably 40 eighths is what we have to go to. Oh, not good. So I prime is going to be out of 40 eighths. Uh, let's see, that's times 16, so 64 over 48 ML squared plus 27 over 48 ml squared, which is going to be, let's see, 91 48ths. Did I do that right? 91 48ths ml squared is our inertia after the collision. Whew. Let's hope some stuff cancels out. <coughs> All right. Well, that's our I prime, and then we can figure out how quickly this thing's going to be rotating afterwards as well. So my inertia before, 3 fourths L times M times V, and that's going to equal I prime, assuming my math's right, 91 48 ml squared omega prime. Okay, my goal was to figure out omega prime, so that's where I'm trying to get to. Let's cancel out some things. I know I can get rid of an L. I know I can get rid of an M. Um, hmm. I can get rid of a 4, and so this will be 91 12. So, oh, that's much more pleasant. Uh, yeah, and then I think I end up with 36 over 91 V over L is equal to omega prime. Okay, really hoping that I didn't make an algebra mistake. If I did, I apologize. Um, but that, that kind of ugly fraction is what we ended up with omega prime. Okay, now if you're really curious, you could try to analyze this from a linear momentum perspective, but you're not going to come up with the same thing. Right, so maybe that's a good thought experiment for you to play around with as to why. But this is what we've got going on for now. Okay, um, this will help you out with your homework assignment. So hopefully if you made it through this video and hopefully if I didn't confuse you too much, you can try your homework assignment that's posted online.